Cisco Endpoint AMP Analysis, Command Line Capture, Interpreter. All right, a couple Cisco Talos links, check them out. Um, Cisco provides the ability to do command line capture and observes these activities against indicators of compromise to discover previously unknown attacks. And we've seen this in previous videos. So as an unknown malware attempts to leverage the command line to further compromise an asset, Cisco Endpoint identifies the threat based on IOCs. Meterpreter is used with pen testing, red and blue team exercises. Meterpreter requires privileged access and Cisco's endpoint AMP detects a privileged elevation tactic using an IOC. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, prior to the detection of mal uh, malicious DLL is observed and we later confirm this with threat grid. So let's dig into this a little bit more, right? So the first thing we do is we pivot from dashboard into inbox. From there, what we're gonna do is find the asset of interest, and then we're gonna pivot to device trajectory, right? And device trajectory is gonna give us the lay of the land, right? Everything that's happened on that asset from uh, files calling other files to making connection uh, uh, um, communication channels to outbound uh, systems, um, we, we capture it all. It's pretty, pretty amazing all the stuff that we capture. As we scroll across, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find that first indicator of compromise, right? And, and we found it. And what we see here, very quickly, it's highlighted in yellow so you can't miss it. Possible privilege escalation attempted and, uh, uh, and it was detected, obviously. And it shows us the command line that we saw that triggered this indicator of compromise. So that's pretty cool, right? We know the exact command line that was used in this particular attack. As we move back a little bit, right? So we can see that it was actually executed. We see services.exe, okay, cool. As we move back a little bit, what we're gonna end up discovering is, um, we see on the left, we see some uh, red file names, right? Only one in this case. We see some green ones, meaning that they're good, right? They're clean. And then we've got some black ones there, right? So obviously we're focused on the red ones and anything that happened to invoke that red behavior, right? So the first thing that we do is we see that red file and just before that red file, let's have a look at what took place. So the first thing that we can see is that rev connect nextpose 444.exe was invoked, right? Uh, once that was invoked by the user, it made an outbound connection to port 444 on that IP address. When it did that, it automatically pulled down this DLL, okay? So we know the DLL's there. Um, we know that we're saying it's malicious. Right, um, and we can right click it, we can dig into it. So we can see it's malicious. Uh, and if we haven't quarantined, in many cases, it's because we're set in audit mode. Remember, we're demoing this to show you uh, all the stuff that you do capture. Um, when we go to file analysis, what we're gonna get now is we're gonna get that threat grid report. And from there, we're gonna be able to look at why was this file convicted, right? Why was this uh, a retrospective event triggered or cloud recall, right? Just because we see something, if we don't know it's bad right away and we have to put it in the sandbox, if we get a, an update to that disposition, we're gonna let you know. So very quickly, what we can see is an antivirus service flagged an artifact as malicious, right? And you can see the interpreter uh, uh, tag being called out throughout um, these artifacts here. Um, and that was enough to convict this file. So we saw the command line, we saw how it was triggered to the EXE, it made an outbound connection, and then DLL was dropped, and we were compromised. But we know all about it. Game over for the attacker.